Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the first problem of the USAMO 2022 which took place earlier this week. This is an interesting combinatorics problem, so without further ado, let us take a look at the problem. Let A and B be positive integers. The cells of an A plus B plus 1 by A plus B plus 1 grid are covered either amber or bronze, such that there's a certain minimum number of amber cells, that minimum is this weird quantity, a squared plus ab minus b, and there's a certain minimum number of bronze cells, uh, that minimum is b squared plus ab minus a. Now, prove that it is possible to choose a amber cells and b bronze cells, such that no two of the a plus b chosen cells lie in the same row or column. Okay, so first off, what I'm going to do is, instead of choosing A plus B cells, which is a little weird for A plus B plus 1 uh, side grid, I'm going to just choose A plus B plus 1 cells that don't lie, that don't have any duplicate row or column. And then if there are A plus 1 amber cells or A amber cells, we are done. Because basically if there's A plus 1 amber cells, I'll just throw away one of the amber cells if there are a amber cells, I'll just throw away one of the bronze cells. Okay, so if I'm choosing A plus B plus 1 cells, uh, basically choosing one from each row or column, there's a useful way to uh, depict this using permutation. So this is a concept that is useful not just for these problems, but in general. So actually a permutation of 1 to n, where n is the side of the uh, grid, corresponds to a choice of cells without same row or column. Uh, basically, for example, if you have the permutation uh, 2, 3, 1, 5, 4, then basically what I'm saying is in the first row, I pick the second cell. In the third, second row, I pick the third cell. In the third row, I pick the first cell. Fourth row, I pick the fifth cell. And then the last row, I pick the fourth cell. Uh, corresponding to 2, 3, 1, 5, 4. Yeah, so just to get this uh, notation out of the way, because it will be useful to help organize uh, uh, a choice of cells. Okay, so anyway, as I've mentioned earlier on, we will just focus on picking A plus B plus 1 cells, no two lines in the same row or column, and then we'll be done if there's A or A plus 1 amber cells in that choice. Okay, let us suppose otherwise, then I claim that we cannot have, uh, so basically I claim that there will be a choice of cells having uh, more than this, so at least A plus 2 amber cells. But there will also be some choice of cells having less than this, which is less than or equal to A minus 1 amber cells. Basically, I cannot have uh, every choice of cells uh, being like less than or equal to A minus 1. And I also cannot have every choice of cells being too many amber. Yeah, so let's take a detour to prove this. So Basically, the intuition is that if every choice of cells, right, is uh, at most a minus one, there will be two little amber cells, which will contradict this condition here. So to see how this play out in terms of the algebra, what we are going to do is quite a natural idea. So we are going to first define uh, for each choice of cells, right? We are going to define a score uh, s of pi, which is given by the number of amber cells chosen in that choice of cells. So if all the possible choice of cells have a score of uh, at most a minus 1, then basically, uh, firstly, you know that there will be a plus b plus 1 factorial choices of cells, right? Because each choice corresponds to a permutation. So the sum of scores over all the possible choices of cells is bounded above by uh, a minus 1, because individually a minus 1, and then times the number of uh, possible permutations. So the sum of scores is bounded above by this. But at the same time, now let's look at, let's focus on each uh, amber cell. So let's say this amber cell, this amber cell will appear right uh, in A plus B factorial choices of cells. Because after I fix this, like I fix this uh, choice, right? Then for the other A plus B rows, I have A plus B columns to choose from. And again, uh, a choice would be uh, a permutation among the A plus B 
uh, numbers. So there's A plus B factorial. Once I fix a, a chosen cell, so I could maybe fix this other amber cell instead, and then the ways to choose the other uh, rows options were again there are A plus B factorial uh, options for them. So basically, for a fixed amber cell, it will contribute its uh, its score to the sum of scores a total of A plus B factorial times. So we now use the condition that there's at least uh, this weird quantity number of amber cells. So the sum of scores is at least number of amber cells times the number of times the amber cell appear uh, in a, a choice of cells. Okay, but this is a contradiction because actually uh, what we have just said is that firstly the score is at most this and the score is at least this but actually the left hand side is strictly less than the right hand side. So there's, there's no way it's possible. And to see this work, work out, actually it's quite straightforward. You cancel the factorial here. Uh, the factorial here will just become uh, a plus b plus 1 after you cancel this whole factorial term with uh, this. Uh, and then to show that the left hand side is less than the right hand side, we just do a simple expansion. This is a squared plus ab, then the plus a and minus a cancel out, then minus b minus 1. So this thing is exactly actually 1 less than this. So the weird quantity is chosen such that it works out actually very nicely. Difference of one only. Okay, so this shows that we cannot have all choices of cells having a minus one, uh, at most a minus one amber cell. So there, there must be some choice that is at least a plus two number of amber cells. But conversely, if we do the exact same argument for bronze, we see that we cannot have uh, two little uh, bronze cells all the time. Uh, there must be some choice of cells having a lot of bronze cells and correspondingly this gives this other condition that there must be some choice of cells having at most a minus one amber cell. So I've proven this claim here and actually what is the last step? Well, let pi be a choice of cells having at least a plus two amber cells, sigma be a choice of cells having at most a minus one amber cells. Then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform pi into sigma by basically repeatedly swapping two numbers within the permutation. And I mean, it's quite straightforward to check that by just doing swaps repeatedly, I'll be able to transform one permutation to another. And actually each swap will change the number of ammo cells by at most two. It can increase or decrease uh, by two, one or zero, uh, but that it won't change by more than two. So because the gap between this and this is, well, is at least three, right? So there must be some step along the way during the swap where we have either A or A plus one amber cells. So basically there's some choice of cell after all that has A or A plus one amber cell. So this is what we set out to prove. So that's all for this problem and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Next week, I'll be covering more USAMO problems.